So yeah. Of course, you can also see it in a way. You know, we're all in this together. So, if you can be nice to someone, you know, it's always better, of course, to be nice to them. But sometimes, you try it the nice way, but they just don't want to listen. Like with that friend that I used to have, or the person that I would have called my friend. I tried telling him in a nice way to leave me alone. At least when he depends on me for his happiness. He didn't want to listen to it, so I had to be a bit more firm. And that's the way with the truth. <clears throat> like, if you don't want to hear the truth, like I can shout at you, and then you may just say, no, no, I'm not hearing you, blah, 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 blah. Right? But if you keep coming back to me, then I will make sure that you somehow hear what I have to say. And the thing is, I know on some level you will hear what I have to say. You will understand, if you want to, what I'm trying to tell you. And that's why, you know, when somebody comes back to me, and then they show again and they take me for granted, that they take what I have to offer, you know, but then they get greedy and they want more of it. Or they take me for granted and just act like, you know, oh, you know, now I can play again. And then I just have to say, leave me, please. Because apparently you didn't understand it the first time. But if you're trying to be like this in my life, then there's no room for you. And... You can then, of course, always feel bad for it and torture yourself, like I've been doing, for telling some people to leave me because they didn't want to leave me. But then once more, try to understand how you felt in that situation and why you did the things that you did. Like you can, for example, feel bad for breaking up with someone because maybe it makes them depressed. But I mean, that's just how they are. Right? And they were just using you to be less depressed. But that's not how it's supposed to be. Because if you're trying to keep other people out of their depression, then you're not really living, right? Because then you're always one step away from your own depression. And having people in your life that depend on you to feel good means that they will also get angry at you if you, you know, if you can't give them anything at the moment. And that's you know, where we come to with the juggling. You start walking the spiritual path. You start incorporating spiritual practice. You say, you know, I have a goal, I want to be happy. First of all, that's a selfish, selfish decision. And therefore, you know, better stick with it. And make sure to keep the people off your back, you know, that are draining your energy. And then you start juggling. And while you're trying to learn how to juggle, people come all the time and try talking to you. And you think, well, don't you see I'm juggling here? It's like that other day I was slacklining and this woman was standing right in my line of sight, staring at me. I mean... That's about as indecent as you can make it. Like, don't you realize that this is really like uncomfortable for me? Of course, I don't have to slackline there. It's also in a way my own fault. But some people are just really disrespectful. They have no shame. They have no like perception on what their presence might do to somebody else. 
You know, just because I'm slacklining here doesn't mean you have to stand there and like outright stare at me. I mean, you can at least sit down somewhere and not just stand immediately in your, in your line of sight because, you know, I pick that up. I know you're staring at me, so it's kind of disturbing. So, I think what it boils down to is always respect. <clears throat> Some people are so disrespectful they will spit into your own yard. Like, they will be a visitor and they will check out your wife or flirt with your husband. And that's disrespectful. Of course, your wife or your husband should be aware of that. And that's why when you want to grow spiritually, I believe it's sometimes better to then just wait for the right person to come into your life <clears throat> and realize you have a similar goal than to just take anyone. I've said that already, I know. But maybe it's just for me also to remind myself of it. Because I find it like highly important that I'm not just the needy little shit and to not just take anyone. But the first thing that has to be absolutely clear is that I have a goal. And that anybody who wants to spend time with me has to be aware that they're going to be second choice. Because first choice is always my mission with God. And what my feeling tells me. And that's just important. And if my partner is not as devoted, you know, to me as a partner, as I would be to her as a partner, and to our then goal that we share together, which is to grow spiritually, then I will make certain decisions. Because to me, this is no joke. And I've said that already. I take this very seriously. And... I think that's what some of the people are missing that find spirituality because they just see it as something, you know, to party, to have sex, you know, something where no rules apply. But that's not true, there are rules, there are quite a lot of them. And that's, you know, to avoid sin. And then what that is, you figure it out for yourself. But Therefore, you try to search for truth. And it's a minefield. I tell you that. It's a minefield. It's a minefield. It's like walking over a meadow where all those dogs have shat and you're trying to avoid it. But there's so much of it. So you really need to make sure you step on the right places. And for that you probably need a very good balance and you need to be aware of your surroundings. So if you don't pay attention, you know, somebody might topple you over and you just land, land in your nice clothes in a pile of shit. So you have to be careful. Because otherwise you will end up in a mosque and suddenly you eat meat. Because you weren't aware of the consequences, you know, what it would mean. Somebody invites you to a mosque and you think, oh, that's interesting, and you go there and you're not aware what this actually means. Now, having gone there, now I know what it means and now I can say I will never go there again because it's not my place to be. It's for people who think they're Muslims. Right? For them, it's the place to be because they can then all gather together and say, We are Muslims! But they don't follow the same values and the same philosophy that I try to have in my life, which is 
no meat. And like certain things that I just don't want, no gluten. But when I'm there, you know, people are going to say, oh, come on, try the food. And they're quite persistent. And if you say no, they're going to get angry. So do you know what I say? I don't come at all. Because if you're making it hard for me to say no, then I don't want to come anymore because then I'm always going to be in the position of offending people. And then I'd rather not come at all. Or make it very sure, right, that I won't eat anything. Yeah, but that's in general, you know, you just learn from it. And now I know I won't go there ever again because it's a pile of shit. And I don't want to, you know, fall into it again. Because I have to work myself out of that also. I don't want to do that anymore. And that brings me back to the point, the place where I want to be does not exist yet. And that's why I have to build it. I want to create my own place with my own rules and that's why I want my own family and head in the same direction I don't want to have a wife that thinks like conventional medicine is the solution I don't want a wife that believes everything the government tells her right I want a wife that can stand up for herself but also that trusts me and because we're heading into the darkness, like we don't know what's gonna happen. And I know how to tread on these paths, but I cannot lead if somebody doesn't trust me. And I've experienced that already. It's incredibly hard to lead people who don't trust you because I already trusted myself beforehand, like I knew how to do it. But other people didn't trust me. And that of course also then made me doubt myself. But sometimes that wasn't really the case. You know, sometimes I trusted myself already, but the other person didn't. And then they were always checking their phone, whereas I knew where to go. And I've proven it to myself over and over again in cities where I've never been before, where I found the parking lot, just because I listened to my intuition, I just knew in which direction to go. I've done it in forests at night, without phone or navigation or anything. Sometimes I didn't even see anything because it was so dark. I just kept going, followed my path, followed my intuition. Sometimes cycling, you know, on the way there I drove with navigation. And on the way back without. And it caused me dis heavy discomfort, you know, driving through the rain, but leaving anyway. And then driving without navigation. And then just following my feeling. And yeah, I only arrived at 10 in the night or something. And I forgot all the food. But somehow, you know, life presented me with a plum tree. Just when I thought, you know, I'm never going to make it, I stuffed my pockets full of plums and then I ate them on the side of the road and then I continued. Following my feeling, I had no idea where I was. But in the end I came to a road I recognized and then it was just, you know, continuing. And my butt hurt. So the last two hours, you know, I could have made that in half an hour, but now it was only uphill. So I just pushed the bike because I thought, you know, why? I don't have to make it harder than it is. So I'll just take my time and I just push the bike. And I manage. So there's always a way. You just have to figure it out. And then you just continue. And don't let outside circumstances like, you know, if you're already in a storm, then there's no use complaining about it. You know, it's just sitting it out and trying to like continue and say please God help me because I don't know what to do and then you say okay continue you know pull yourself together focus boom you no know, bah and then you just do that 
and your gut feeling works best with a healthy gut. So I say stop eating gluten, stop eating meat, probably drink less coffee, eat less sugar, um, but don't do everything at once or do everything at once, you know, and then just see how it works and then learn from that. Because the worst thing is not changing anything at all because you're afraid to change the wrong thing. So just maybe change everything at once and then just see how it works. And maybe you're different than me and nothing to complain about.